Have you felt that in your teaching career, you have experienced all types of burnout more than once? Or would you use the word dumpster fire to explain how you feel like your days are going in the classroom and in your life outside of it? If so, this is the episode for you. I'm going to be interviewing a Burned In Teacher University student who was so burned out and so fogged and clouded over with her burnout, she actually didn't know she was pregnant until her second trimester. I can't wait for you to hear her transformation and what she's doing now to bring joy and passion into her life besides being a happier and more fulfilled teacher. Let's dive into this episode and my interview with Corinne, a Burn and Teacher University student. Let's dive in. Hi, Corinne. Thank you so much for joining us on the Burned In Teacher podcast. I am so excited for you to share your journey with us today. Hi, Amber. I am too. Very, very excited. Oh my <laughs> like, goodness. So let's... Girl. <laughs> well, I'm so used to seeing your face. You are also a Burn In Teacher <laughs> member. And so we get to collaborate and, and talk to one another about once a month. So it feels like we're just two friends sitting <laughs> having coffee. It's really, really nice to see you. It's nice to see you too. I'm excited for this. <laughs> So tell the listeners of the podcast a little bit about you. Where do you teach? How long have you been at this? And where are you in the world? Okay. Uh, well, I am a little outside of St. Louis. We decided to, we were in the city of it and we decided to move out to get a little more land. And I am a mama of three. My oldest, Carl, is in second grade that he just started a couple days ago. And Philomena's in first. And then I've got Adelaide rounding us out still in pre-K. So we're all busy over here. Yes, you um, are. <laughs> and I am married to my husband for the last nine years. We met sort of in between college and he actually has gotten the whole family into arm wrestling, which I've shared with you before. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're going to have to take some time to talk about this because this is like a side passion of yours, right? <laughs> yeah. And as I told my students about it and they're like, oh, you arm wrestling? And I'm like, yeah. They're like, have you won? I was like, no, no, I am not. <laughs> not there it. yet. Um, but yeah, it's been kind of a, a neat little journey for us. Yeah. My husband was doing it before and then the kids got to like start doing it because they do like little matchups before the big meet and I was already there and so I was like okay I'll join in and mm -hmm. so that's just kind of what we do we are a very active family and it's a passion of mine to just showcase any way that I'm strong and everything but on the teaching side I am entering my 16th year I think honestly I I'm not really sure. They all start to run together, <laughs> right? right? I'm in year 15. And sometimes I'm like, how long have I been teaching? <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep it straight. And, um, and I started off right after college, but I moved overseas to Ireland because I have dual citizenship and I started off in a special needs school. And that first day of school, I had, I was in like a kindergarten, first grade mix. And one little boy stood up. Very first thing he said to me was, off, off Miss Murphy and ran off out of the door into the back court and up a tree and I was like oh my gosh oh, okay my goodness. I don't know what to do so my career was like kind of off to a running start and um it was a great learning year and I still wanted to stay with teaching and uh but I wanted to come back to the states so I moved back to um actually Chicago because I didn't really want to come back I I've grown up in St. Louis and then but I wanted to start with Chicago taught a year there for students with autism, but I was in a class with 15 to 22 year olds. So I jumped a lot. Wow, in. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I decided after that school year, uh, after the third concussion, uh, this was not uh, for me. I was going to try to go back to general ed. And I actually moved home to St. Louis and took a year actually as a teacher assistant just to learn the process and I had to like transfer my license and all yeah. that stuff, take courses and it was just too much to like try to take my own classroom mm -hmm. so I got to learn that then the following year I helped open a charter school and I was there for five years in kindergarten where you are now and uh <laughs> and but I I like made the best of teacher friends but it showed me that uh charter schools need a union and so I ended up needing to leave mm -hmm. and I left and I'm at 
my current school and district and I left and started with kindergarten and then I started having all of my children within that first like four years and I was teaching kindergarten still and um, I realized I needed a break from littles at home and littles at school and so I requested to move to third grade and this will be my fourth year in third grade and it was a really good decision once I finally got my life together because of you so oh you (laughs) you know there's something to say for um there's something to say for not teaching the same age group oh yeah if you have children at home that are about the same age, because it is all day long, especially with the little littles, right? Like they're touching you every, like, yes, you can't give any more. And I felt terrible coming home. And I I didn't even really want to give a hug anymore to my kids. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is wrong? Like, I love you guys. (laughs) So it just was like, I needed to change something. So at least I knew to do that and just other things needed to still change. <laughs> yeah, I can relate to that so much because when I first started my teaching career, I taught first grade. I had a first grader and it was challenging sometimes. I think the only reason that I didn't really burn out with that age level is our daughter who was in first grade at that time, she was she acted like a third and a fourth grader. So I didn't feel like she wasn't super needy in the way that, you know, a lot of kindergarten first graders are. And mm-hmm. then I I tended actually to move up whenever she moved up and it was it that worked out fine. However, I cannot imagine teaching kindergarten when my girls were young, like babies, like Baby. babies, toddlers mm-hmm. into preschool kindergarten like I that would be very hard for me and I think one reason that I love teaching kindergarten so much now is because my girls are old. Like our oldest is 22. <laughs> Our youngest is 15. They're not cuddly anymore. Like I almost feel like I get to be like, obviously I'm very structured. You know, I have, you know, (laughs) I put my teacher hat on when I'm at school, but I get to be like the, I get to be the cool, fun aunt during the day (laughs) and they love me and I'm their favorite person, you know, whenever I'm at school. And when you're teaching littles, you're like famous, right? Like they see you out in the wild and they're like, whoa, Mrs. Harper left the school. And it's just, it's very fun that, you know, I get those cuddles, I get that love. And then I come home and then I have, you know, very adult conversations with my children. So it's, it's a great balance for me. And I totally respect your decision. I think that's a really great lesson for anybody that, that may be struggling with feeling burned out, feeling really depleted is to really first like check if there are any of those triggers or, you know, those, um, any of those alarms that could be going off of like, wow, you know, I'm spending time all day with the same age group and it's just draining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it was a good move and I'm glad for it. So (laughs) yeah, well, good for you. Good for you for noticing that in yourself and, and making the change. So I have a question about your burnout, you know, you've mentioned that, that you burned out to me a a few different times. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious if you can kind of let us in to that, what that looked like and felt like, and what you believe caused it. And Mm -hmm. then, you know, kind of transitioning then into what brought you to burn and teacher. So, but let's start with the really hard stuff, you know, where you were whenever you were struggling the most. So, I mean, as I said, I've done the quiz and describing your three burnouts. I've been them all throughout my, my, my career. And I think in the beginning, I was just, you know, fresh and new and young. And I wanted to prove something like, would I ever become teacher of the year or any of that? And I I went in hard. I went in at five in the morning and I would leave at six o'clock at night not sure what I was accomplishing because I still would take things home. I mean, there was just no time balance. And at that point in my life, it was okay. I didn't have babies at at all yet. And, but I was, I was taking on a lot. I was signing up for everything I wanted. I ended up becoming a mentor, like within my first three years at the charter school. And I was signing up to lead this and that. And it And I was also, I became a high school swim coach. So I was doing all these things and it, 
it slowly wasn't going to become sustainable. And then when I left the charter school, because we were asked to do way more, even throughout our days, I think we only had three plan periods a week. And so I guess it validated why I would go in at five and leave at six, because there wasn't enough time personally to even get anything done during the school day Mm -hmm. is what I would say. Um, And then And then I went to the new district and it was almost like keeping up with the Joneses because I was trying to, or I guess like the terms now, like keeping up with Karen, I don't know, whatever it is. (laughs) Um, But I, I came in and again, I wanted to prove myself, but also I was pregnant with my first, my, my oldest. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. What am I doing? And I I was like, I got to do this. I've got to do this. I've got to make my class look like a Pinterest thing, which I like classroom setup was the Sunday scary of scaries. I could not, I was never that person. Like Mm -hmm. I can't do it. I just, everyone always could see something beautiful and make it. And it just, it didn't bring me joy. It brought me just terribleness. And, and then we're, we're trying to make these Pinterest crafts. And I honestly, I didn't even know what I was teaching. Cause I was just trying to, again, look like I had it all together, but I was like a dumpster fire. And, and, and to even put into words, like my second child, Philomena, I didn't know I was pregnant until the second trimester y'all. Wow. Yeah. I had lost all control of like what I was feeling in myself because I was just all over the place. And it was, you know, I laugh about it and make jokes that she was a ninja baby, but it was just, that was like, you know, yeah, I was like, everybody's like, how did you not know? And I couldn't, I, I didn't understand why I didn't know. And then, you know, and then I had the third child right as COVID um, was coming through. So I'm still in kindergarten and we, we send them off to spring break and it's by, and then we do online learning. And that was whatever. It was just funny, honestly, when you, with kindergarten and COVID actually was, and I know it was hard for a lot of other people in the world, but for us, my family, it was amazing. We slowed down. Mm-hmm. My husband got to be home way more, um, we had a lot of cherished memories and even like that was, and then the next school year was the first year in third grade. And our district was wonderful, even though I was scared because we went fully back in. Uh, Our district took a lot of the silly things away that are always like honor plate, honor plate, honor plate. And they took it away. And I was a teacher. Mm -hmm. I was just learning third grade. I was with my students and it was just peaceful. And I was like, I made the right choice. I was supposed to come to third grade. Well, then the next year happened and it was like, everything's back to normal. No COVID, everything. And that's, I, that's when it really imploded. Like everything went wrong. I, I was crying every day. My kids, my at home just didn't know who I was anymore. I didn't know who I was anymore. My husband's like trying to help me and, and I'm, I decided I have to leave. And so I have to leave this profession. This is what I'm doing. So it was my goal. I actually started listening to the teacher career podcast, Daphne. And funny enough, I heard you on it and I was angry when I heard you. Cause I was like, no, I oh. want to leave. <laughs> I want to leave. Don't tell me I can fix it. <laughs> you know, like where it was like, blame everybody else. I'm not ready to accept my burnout and fix it. I wasn't there yet. And so I uh, was, was, I got a, uh, a coach to show me how to get a new job, how to interview. I, learned a lot about myself and like how to showcase myself. And I actually even learned like, oh, I was like really good at my job. Oh, I am good at teaching. I I am not this person that has whatever aspired to be. And I then started listening to your podcast and in the summer leading up to last school year. Mm -hmm. and I started listening and like things were slowly and I and I was still applying for jobs and I was like 
if I get a yes, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I ended up getting a yes to become a trainer for new employees at a, um, I can't even remember. And it was all the things that I could ask for. And I, I, I sat in my pros and cons, just sat in it. And I, and I looked everywhere and the biggest con for me was I couldn't leave the profession so poorly that like, if I needed to leave, that's fine. But I mean, my admin thought so poorly of me. Um, maybe they didn't, but it was, it we left on bad terms. I, I mean, I got pulled into the principal's office twice to just be like, you're, you're a dumpster fire. And it, it hurts so bad. And so I listened to your podcast and I, I kept like thinking, you know, I was right. I would always write everything down that you would give the tips on. And I finally was like, I need to, I need to do this. I need to join this course because I think I need more. It was actually, you did a, like a free little half hour training session and it, it showed like a little snippet of what the course would be like. And I was like, yep, this is what I need. I need this. And I mean, the transformation, everyone talks about, they just can't even believe it's me anymore, you know, mm -hmm. and it, I'm very thankful for it. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> thank you for telling that story. I mean, I was over here emotional at one point, like <laughs> I so know what it feels like to try to just keep like save face and try to just like fake it until I make it while you're like, also you feel like you're dying inside and you are just screaming, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're screaming inside and you think you're doing a good job of faking it. And then it turns out you're not, or, you know, and, and I don't know like how your administration knew that you were a dumpster fire or, you know, use that word dumpster fire. Um, I love that term, by the way, I use it all. Yeah, I know, <laughs> but for me, it was like, it's that infamous breakdown, right? Like it was a very public breakdown. And, you know, I talk about the one that involved my dog, but that was not the only one. Right. But that was like the biggest one where I'm like, this cannot continue to be my normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it and sounds it like that was your reality too. Yeah. I mean, when it's funny, we, even teachers right now, we're in our first week and some, and we make the joke, you know, I think we need to move professions because this is really hard because the first week is always you just transition oh, yeah. transitions are hard in general yeah. you know you can't and you can't go off that and my dear um teacher partner um next door she was just like please tell me this will get better and I'm like it will mm -hmm. we just have to you know we're managing our time we're gonna get it and it, it's it's okay and and finally being okay with only getting so many things done in the day I think that's just the biggest thing is we we have such a high standard for ourselves like that's just teachers 100%. in general you yeah, know we're such high achievers <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's to a fault almost and and I've been telling myself and telling everyone else around me is like you have to give yourself grace you just have to or you're gonna you're gonna crumble you are <laughs> and like when you shared that part of your story, when you were like doing all of these Pinterest class, like activities and um, crafts and like trying to make your, your classroom look like a Pinterest worthy classroom. Like I, that resonates with me so much because that is not me either. I am not, I don't love crafts. I don't craft on my own. I no. never have loved doing crafts with my own biological children. My husband did. I never did like, I want to be like on the floor playing with them or I want to mm -hmm. go somewhere and like do something. I don't want, like, I just, I, I don't enjoy that. And like, I teach kindergarten. I still don't <laughs> love doing crafts. We don't do a lot of crafts. Like that's for art. <laughs> I'm going to get them up moving. We're going to be doing stuff together. And if you're not listening to that part of you, like you were clearly not enjoying it, but you were telling yourself the story that this is what I have to do to prove that I'm a good teacher. Like your oh. values were all messed up, right? Like they were completely buried under what you shoulda, coulda, woulda been doing. You know, we mm -hmm. talk about that in the course a <laughs> lot. Um, and so I can completely resonate with, with you feeling that way, because if you're trying to 
be everything to everybody and do all the things that you feel like you should be doing, you're not really thinking about who you are and what makes you a wonderful teacher. I didn't know who I was at all as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And it, it finally, I I was trying to do someone else's style or this style or, and I liked seeing what they did and I was impressed by it. And I was like, wow, but I needed to figure out how to make it me and Mm -hmm. and be okay with that. It wasn't going to look Pinterest. I'm just minimalist. And that I'm getting the jump, the job done. It's just, it won't be as pretty. I don't know. Like, yeah, they're having fun. We're moving around. (laughs) Exactly. And now like I, I can relate to that too, because I mean, I had a very, Uh, explicit conversation with my teaching partner, Tracy, when I first started this job as a kindergarten teacher, I said, I am not all about the new and shiny. I used to be, I used to like, Oh, I saw this online. I got to do this, you know, or I saw this new app. I got to use this app with my kids. And it was exhausting. Like I was always teaching the tool. I wasn't teaching content kind of thing, you know? And I was like, that is not who I am. I am. I'm very minimalistic. My classroom is very minimalistic you know, it's fun. It's inviting. It's bright. It's cheery, but it is very simple. And I said, you, if you want to do crafts, you go for it. I probably will not. (laughs) Like I just was very, you know, obviously I'm, I wasn't like, you know, unkind about it or like, (laughs) you know, it wasn't anything like that. It was just like, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And it, if I don't do something that you do, it's not because I disrespect you or I think it's dumb. It's just not how it's just not me. So Mm -hmm. just please know, like I just learned throughout the years that you just have to be really explicit and like upfront about who you are and just let them know that, you know, cause some teachers get their feelings hurt if they share something and you don't use it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I've never felt bad. Like if I'm like, Hey, this is really cool. I loved it. I loved using this with my kids. The kids loved it. It was great. And someone didn't use it. I never took it personally, but some people do. Right. Right. But like knowing who you are is such an important part of being a truly good teacher for yourself to yourself first. Yes, absolutely. And then, and then you're able to do so much. You're able to be the, a better teacher, a better, a better wife, mom, human in general, Mm -hmm. when you know yourself, that is is huge. It's huge. Well, and it sounded too, like you had really overcommitted yourself that you were really (laughs) involved in a lot as well. So you had all of these narratives in your head about what a good teacher should do and what your Mm -hmm. classroom should look like. In addition to you had all these other obligations that you had to leave the classroom. Like it sounds like you just could not keep up with your own commitments and your own stories that you had going on in your head. Yep. I was always saying yes to something and no to a lot of other things Mm -hmm. that would have been good to me, you know, and it was that opportunity cost is really big, Uh right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So you clearly, you clearly were so like fogged over with all of these obligations, all of these feelings, all of, you know, basically running yourself ragged that you didn't even know you were pregnant. I mean, that's, that's pretty incredible. Like, like didn't know me at all. Right. Right. So, so when you (laughs) heard what I found really interesting is when you told us that you listened to the teacher career podcast, Daphne's podcast is amazing. She is helping Um, thousands of teachers who really have decided that it is time to transition out her course and her podcast really help teachers to believe that they are capable of something more. Yes. When they feel so, some teachers feel so beaten down by the profession. And I just appreciate what she does so, so much. Mm-hmm. It's interesting to me though, that you were like mad at me <laughs> whenever you first listen to the podcast. And I actually, I get that reaction quite a bit. Like Amber, Girl. you really were very annoying to me when I first heard you and I've, I've come to terms with it. I get it. <laughs> It's like, you're not showing rainbows and butterfly. Like it's so great over here, but it's just funny. Cause I was like, I don't want to hear it. Why do you have it figured out over there? Like I'm drowning here and dying. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to stay know. in this misery, but, and that's, that's the choice. Like you have a choice to either uh, come to terms. Like I was becoming burnt out and I wasn't a bad teacher. I just didn't know what I was doing anymore. And I just needed to come to terms with it's no one's fault. Uh, And I just need to say, okay, what can I do to Mm. fix it? You know, Mm -hmm. what, where can I get these tools that I need? And and you have them explicitly easy. And it was just a breath of fresh air. 
So. Yeah. Thank you. I, it's, <laughs> it's so nice to hear that because I don't always get to hear, you know, from the other end, like how things are going for people. I'm curious, do you remember like what the episodes were that you first started listen, listening to that helped you to kind of shift your mindset a little bit? Um. Oh, gosh. It was a lot of it started with like your time management, uh, goal setting. I don't know that like episode numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean. Oh, no, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah I was just curious about like what the message was that yeah. really started to resonate with you. Yeah. It was just, it was just kind of figuring out it, it was easy and applicable to do. You just kind of laid out, this is what I do in my classroom. And I was like, oh, I could do that. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I did. I started it the next day and it was, it was like, oh, okay, I can do that. And it was just simple things. And I, I kind of just started tell, I started talking about it and I was like, I listen to this podcast now. And, and she tells me how to be a better teacher. Cause people are like, what do you, you, you look like you got it together a little bit. I was like, well, I do. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love hearing whenever other people notice the changes in you. Yes. Like the way you're carrying yourself, the way that you're caring for your classroom, the way that you speak, the words that come out of your mouth, your demeanor changes. And I experienced that myself when I started doing the research back in 2016, uh, actually 20, late 2014, 15, especially in 16, when I went back into the classroom again. Uh, for the first time after I left. <laughs> and uh, yeah, people mentioned, even my principal, I remember he was like, you've changed. You've been doing some work on yourself. And I said, I have, thank you for noticing. And that's just a good feeling, right? When people it, start to notice. It and it's just like, I'm, I'm working hard. So thank you for noticing. Yeah. You know, when you're working out and someone's like, who can some muscles on you? I'm like, yes, I right? am. Right. Yeah, that's a good feeling. And you know, this is a really good transition. So let's talk about, let's talk about your transition. Like, how are you feeling now? Like when you get up in the morning, you know, what is, what is life like now for okay. Corinne? Uh, so I have really taken in your priority planner and I, every Sunday I lay out like what my week's going to look like. And obviously things happen, whatever, but I have an outline and I know what to expect. I'm actually planning my week with meals and nothing's going to totally take me over mm -hmm. as a surprise. And if it does, I can actually handle it because I've got the mental capacity to do that. Um, but I have since doing the burned in teacher, um, you have eight, eight modules, right? Is that what mm -hmm. it is? Yeah. There's okay. technically eight. nine because right. right when you first okay. sign up, yes, you right immediately okay. you get into the start here module, which is module yes. zero, yes. right? And then I drip out the other eight modules. Yes. Yeah. Over the next Very few weeks. Easy mm -hmm. going, you get to pace set, you feel good. So the, the biggest one that changed like my outlook for what I was going to do, um, was the goal setting. So reverse to last year when I was, um, or the year before I was trying to figure things out, I actually was like, okay, I'm leaving the classroom. What can I do? And I took my, um, certification to be a personal trainer. And I was like, cause I love fitness. I, that's always brought me joy. Like if I can't figure things out, like I can go work out. And one of, that was also like, why I really burnt out because we were moving and I didn't have a gym to really go to. So I was feeling horrible about myself. Well, now I've gotten that all back together. I've got a morning routine where I'm, I'm working out. I'm either going, I'm either doing, um, a home workout or creating a home workout mm -hmm. or, <laughs> or, um, or I go to the barn gym and lift weights. Um, I got had to pause that when we've had some major storms and some trees were in front of the barn. So oh, no. It, yeah, but it's okay. Cause I was able, I still like had a routine where I could still like do some kind of workout. Whereas before I think I would have just stopped and might've like not done that habit anymore. And I've really been kind of preaching that a lot is like, what habits can you easily implement and make it sustainable? And that's one of my words this year um, is being sustainable. Um, is this going to sustain or is it just going to fizzle out and I, or I'm not going to do it, you mm -hmm. know? And um, 
I've really been showcasing it on social media with uh, my Instagram and I've started a YouTube channel. <laughs> you have. Listen, like I'm, I'm so proud of you because as a Burden Teacher member, after you finished the course, you became a member of Burden Teacher and you've been sharing this journey with all of us and all of the other members are like cheering you on. I love this for you so much, Corinne, because what I have found, the satisfaction that I get from Burn-In Teacher while also being a full-time teacher is it's a wonderful creative outlet yes. and it's something, it, it gives you a reason to turn off your teacher brain and to turn on this other brain that you have. You know, right. it gives you something else to look forward to Yes, besides yes. just teaching every day. Yes. And I didn't know what I was going to do outside the four walls. Like For me, I, I didn't expect to teach for the next 30 years until I retire, mm -hmm. and, but I didn't want to be a principal. That sounds terrible. It still sounds terrible. I, I agree. <laughs> My <laughs> husband's one. I'm like, I never want to do that. No, how do you do that? I don't I like, I mean, bless you for doing that, but like, it sounds terrible. Right? <laughs> we need good ones, but yes. I don't want to be one. <laughs> no. And then I thought instructional coach and, and more so because of like the coaching thing, but honestly, I'm terrible at curriculum. I'm terrible at data. Like it, it brings me no joy. I love talking to teachers and I love talking to adults about other things. And, mm -hmm. and so I was like, what can I do? And then fit curriculum kind of like, uh, just kind of bubbled up where I was like, I'm going to show people habits that they can do really easily. And then I, I was like, what else can I do with this? Well, I've got this personal trainer thing. So why don't I just make some workouts and you can do them at home. You can do them at school in, you know, before or during your plan period. Like, I just want you to be able to move and have that mental capacity where you're not having to think of what workout am I going to do? Mm -hmm. And I don't know what's going to come from it, but I'm having fun. It's a passion project. Like, yeah. will it do something for me one day? I don't know. But honestly, it's just, it's bringing the joy that I needed and the oh. direction, you know, I feel, I feel like there's something that I am doing in life now, you know, yeah. other than, other than hanging out with kids, which I, I do enjoy. Like when you have that burnout, you feel like, oh my gosh, I, I don't hate kids, but like, but you feel that. Yeah. And then, and then now you I'm hate like, the way you feel about, yeah, I hate the way you children. feel. Right. And right. You don't want to admit that burnout. Cause then people are like, Oh, you hate children. Then oh. I'm like, no, <laughs> oh. totally get that. You know, and you don't want to like say it, it sounds so, ugh. Yeah. but yeah. So now I, I have that passion and I get to, you know, do two different things and still mommy it up. And the mm -hmm. kids are, my, my own kids are really funny. They're like, are you recording a workout today? Like maybe, yeah, they've tried to come into it and I'm like, <laughs> I love it so much. I love that for so many reasons that you're doing this and we'll definitely link to your YouTube channel too in the show notes so people can check it out. So I used to work out after school years and years ago. I used to work out with some friends after school in our classrooms. I mean, I remember pushing desks aside. We would project it up from one of our computers. We'd project it up onto the, um, onto the screen and we would, we do, we do a pretty intense workout some days in there. <laughs> it was really fun. It, 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 it brought us together as teachers. We were also like centering around our physical wellness. So that was really nice. So I'm excited to hear, do you, are you recording some of your videos in your classroom? Yes. So I just That's started awesome. doing that. <laughs> I, uh, I've done two so far, but editing is a, is a beast. Uh, yeah. Luckily my husband is uh, more into that. So he's been helping out a lot in that. And so we're just kind of learning and I appreciate anyone that d has, is doing it with me right now. Cause I mean, it feels cringy at first. <laughs> like when I'm, I'm it like, does. Oh. It does. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when your friends like see your stuff. I have friends that like, they still give me a hard time and tease me a little bit because they know me more than they know me better than anybody. And, right. um, but it, you just have to move on. You just have to right? move on again. You're doing you, you're not doing yes. them. You're doing right. what you know is best for you. And so you have to move past it. Yeah. At least I'm getting a workout out of it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the end of the day, like doesn't do any harm to me. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's so great. So to wrap up this interview, Corinne, what would you say to a teacher who's listening or even to a teacher that, you know, you're talking to face-to-face, -face, they are struggling and that maybe they've heard of Burnin Teacher University, but they're kind of on the fence. They don't know if it's for them or not. You know, what would you, what would you tell them? You have to be ready, obviously, but the tools that you give in this burn, burned in university is 
you can use it everywhere. Like, I think that's what you have to realize is if you also feel burned out at school, you're probably feeling burned out in your, in your life. And I feel that once I started doing your modules, everything kind of was, again, I realized, oh, I could have done that in this season of life or, oh, that would have been really helpful last season, you know, because there are so many, I mean, we, we live millions of lives, I mm-hmm. feel like, mm-hmm. you know, since, since birth really. And having those tools that I can just look back at and remind myself, you know, is just, it's really important. And now I have also this, this community that I can reach out to. Um, I love like every Wednesday, there's always this collaboration. Like I have a question about this and you get to listen to what other teachers are doing. And I was like, Oh, okay. And then the lessons that you give us each week, uh, you check in with us and I love it. Like if you have a question, you're going to answer it. And it's, if you're feeling alone or if you and a teacher friend do it together, you know, do it. And then you can support each other and, and feed off of each other's energy. Cause you're going to, you're going to change, you know, it, once you start in this process, it's going to happen. Like you will want to commit to it. You'll want to commit to yourself again. And it's, that's, it's amazing. You know, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for saying that. (laughs) And I feel like maybe you're talking to yourself as you were annoyed with me. (laughs) (laughs) No, she's really not crazy. She's not full of it. (laughs) Please like her. You will like her. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Well, I really like you a lot, Corinne. And you are so, I, you are such a go-getter. You remind me so much of myself. Like you just, you've done everything that the course offers as an opportunity for you to make changes, to make shifts, um, to add new things into your life and for you to just really blossom into who you are now and to put out into the world, your passions outside of teaching. I mean, I I was going to say earlier, you know, you can, you can love teaching and be frustrated with it a little bit you know, and move through, you know, your day-to-day duties. But when it comes down to it, it's a job. You do it because you get paid. Like you're, you're making an income from it. It is a job. What you're doing with fit curriculum right now, it's not paying the bills, but you love it it for you, you know? (laughs) And, you know, we say as teachers that we, that we teach, we do it for the kids and we really do. But we also do it because it's our job. It's, it's our, it's how we pay our bills. Mm -hmm. And so I just really want to encourage anybody who else out here who's listening, who is devoting every single minute, you know, paid or unpaid to do the work that you're doing at school and committees and grading and prepping and all of that stuff that you owe it to yourself to do something just because you love it, not because you feel like you have to. And we all deserve that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bring that joy back to yourself Mm because we've all had it in the beginning. We did when we had time and everything. So bring that joy back. And I think they'll get it from you. Yeah. And I mean, you can be like Corinne. I mean, look at that smile on her face. She's <laughs> she's so, she's so full of joy every time we jump on a group coaching call. And you're also, I do appreciate Corinne. You're always also so willing to offer feedback and advice to other members in the group. Whenever they do post to the collaboration, that weekly collaboration post, whenever they need something like you're right in there, like I've tried this, I have this resource for this. I heard this somewhere, or I heard Amber say this, you know, in the course, you know, you're just so willing to jump in and serve and help. And that is the epitome of a burn-in teacher is somebody who is willing to help other people who are struggling Um, rather than, you know, you go to some people and you tell them that you're struggling with this and they're like, oh yeah, tell me about it. You wouldn't believe what happened to me the other day. And then they start spouting off about all their hardships. And Mm -hmm. you're just like, no, I I really, I want advice. I want some help. Like that, this isn't helping. Right. And you're just always so willing to jump in and help. So thank you. Thank you for being such an active member. We really appreciate it. (laughs) (laughs) And thank you for coming on the Burn In Teacher podcast. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with the listeners or the watchers of this episode today? No, I thank you for having me. I've enjoyed this. I um, I feel like a fangirl. I've been listening to the podcast, so now I feel so famous. <laughs> you are so famous. <laughs> famous to all those teachers out there that need yeah. inspiration. We are just so grateful. Thank you for your time. I know it's a lot to ask you to come on this interview. You know, after a full day of, of teaching, I totally get it. And I'm just so grateful for you and your time, Corinne. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, my friends, take a deep breath because you just took another step to becoming a burned in teacher. Burn on.